Good day class. For today, we will be discussing another topic which is all about seafloor spreading. Before we proceed with the discussion proper, let us have our opening prayer. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. God of grace, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to worship to you. Thank you that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. Thank you that as we gather together, we join with all Christians across the world to glorify your holy name. Come be with us, inspire us, and lead us in our time together. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Okay class, so for the checking of the attendance, kindly comment down your complete name and section and answer the question, how are you feeling today? As we go on in discussing our lesson for today, the lesson objectives are the following. So at the end of the lesson, learners should be able to Number one, to define seafloor spreading and to explain seafloor spreading theory. So let us have our review or recall. So we all know that the continental drift theory describes one of the earliest ways geologists thought continents move over time. So today, the theory of continental drift has been replaced by the science of plate tectonics. The theory of continental drift is most associated with the scientist Alfred Wegener. So in the uh, early 20th century, Wegener published a paper explaining his theory that the continental land masses were drifting across the earth sometimes flowing through oceans and into each other so he called this movement as the continental drift Wegener was convinced that all of the earth's continents were once part of an enormous single landmass called Pangaea when Pangaea broke up the northern continents of North America and Eurasia became separated from the southern continents of Antarctica, India, South America, Australia, and Africa. The large northern continent is called Laurasia and the southern continent is called Gondwanaland. Until only recently, geologists had thought that Earth's surface hadn't changed much since the planet formed 4.6 billion years ago. They believed that the oceans and the continents were always where they are now. But less than 100 years ago, a German scientist named Alfred Wegener took notice of some interesting findings. Similar plants and animal fossils were found in both Africa and South America and on other continents separated by oceans. Similar rock formations were also found on distant continents. This suggested that the formations were once whole and later divided. Wegener also noticed that if you could show Western Europe and Africa together with North and South America, their coastlines would fit together very neatly. All this evidence led to Wegener to believe that the continents were once connected but had separated and drifted apart. In 1915, Wegener proposed his continental drift theory. He said that, uh, the continents floated atop the mantle, a heavier, denser layer of rocks deep within the earth. 
Wagener predicted that heat rising within the hot mantle created currents of partially melted rocks that could move the continents around the Earth's surface. Here are the evidences that supports the continental drift theory proposed by Sir Alfred Wegener. Shape or the matching ends of continents and rocks, fossil evidences, coal deposits in Antarctica, ancient climate, and glazer carvings. Despite of these evidences, the continental drift theory was still rejected during that time because he can't explain what causing the continents to drift. What other evidences can be used to support the idea that continents are drifting? So let's find out in today's lesson. Many people in the past believed that the ocean floor is flat like the desert. But in 1930s, where sounding gear called sonar was developed, leads to the discovery of the standing feature of the ocean floor. One of the scientists to use sonar to study ocean floor during World War II was Harry Hammond Hess, a professor of geology at Princeton University. Harry Hess postulated that molten materials from the Earth's mantle continuously wells up along the crest of the mid-ocean ridges that wind for nearly 80,000 kilometers through all the world's oceans. As the magma cools, it is pushed away from the flanks of ridges. This spreading creates a successively younger ocean floor, and the flow of material is thought to bring about the migration or drifting apart of the continents. The idea of seafloor spreading is supported by these evidences. Molten materials, seafloor drill, radiometric age dating and fossil ages, and magnetic stripes. Scientists find out that youngest rocks are found near the ridge, while oldest rocks are found far from the ridge. This provides evidence that seafloor spreading and new crust is being created at the ridge. Since their spreading that happens at the ridge, the sediments near the ridge are thinner and progressively thickens as you move away. Another strong evidence that supports seafloor spreading is the geomagnetic reversal. Basalt, the once molten rock that makes up most new oceanic crust, is a fairly magnetic substance. Scientists began using magnetometers to measure the magnetism of the ocean floor in the 1950s. Scientists discovered that the magnetism of the ocean floor around mid-ocean ridges was divided into matching stripes on either sides of the ridge. The specific magnetism of basalt and rock is determined by the Earth's magnetic field when the magma is cooling. Scientists determined that the process formed the perfectly symmetrical stripes on both sides of a mid-ocean ridge. The continual process of seafloor spreading separated the stripes in an orderly pattern.
how is seafloor spreading disproves and supports continental drift theory. Supporters of continental drift originally theorized that the continents move through unmoving oceans. Seafloor spreading proves that the ocean itself is the site of tectonic activities. Did you know that the seafloor spreading and subduction keeps the shape of the earth? Seafloor spreading creates new crust while subduction destroys old crust. The two forces roughly balance each other, so the shape and diameter of the earth remains constant. To summarize the entire discussion, you have learned that Seafloor spreading happens at the bottom of the ocean as tectonic plates move apart. The seafloor moves and carries continents with it. At ridges in the middle of oceans, new oceanic crust is created. The motivating force for seafloor spreading ridges is tectonic plate pull rather than magma pressure. Although there is typically significant magma activity at spreading ridges. We also learned that seafloor spreading and subduction keeps the shape of the earth. Seafloor spreading creates new crust while subduction destroys old crust. The two forces roughly balance each other, so the shape and diameter of the earth remains constant. Thank you so much for attending my class today and I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and the informations used in the PowerPoint presentation are credits to the rightful owner.